Hey there guys, so I've got another kit here to build. This one's a uh, 38 LED lamp. Um, they use a couple of watts, maybe two, two and a half watts. Uh, they're not bad little lamps. I've got one on the go at the table at the moment, which is the, the cool looking light, as in cool color. Uh, let me get underneath, see the lamp there. You can get them off eBay, uh, cheap enough. I actually bought mine quite a while ago because I've got quite a few of these I actually use. Um, I don't know why I keep saying actually. But, yep, yeah, I got mine a little while ago and um, I find them to be pretty good. So I thought I'd uh, just do a little video, just building one of these up just to show how easy they are. It's not really complicated at all. You don't need to learn exactly how the circuit works or anything because it's a kit. Which is ideal. So I don't think I could demonstrate the whole thing anyway. I know that this is a um, this capacitor is used. Um, this is what governs the current flow pretty much. Um, you get because we're using a bridge rectifier, a full wave rectifier. You get about seven milliamp to one hundred nanofarads. And there's 480, uh, sorry, 680 nanofarads here because we've got a 6, 8, and the 4 at the end represents how many zeros. And this is nanofarads, a special type of capacitor. I mean, it's an X2, um, just means I think it's more sturdily built and it's for higher voltages because we don't want this uh, being a pain. So, what we're going to have is we're going to have our um, bridge rectifier. It's going to be taking in the AC mains and then rectifying it out to a rather ripply um, DC. And at the end of that, we're going to have this smoothing capacitor. Again, 400 volts. Because um, I want 240 volts here, so the voltage swing will go up as high as 380. And as low as 380 on the AC. But by the time we've DC uh, rectified it, AC rectified the DC, we're not going to have that swing as such up and down below zero. Imagine that's the zero line here. Up and then down. It's just going to go up and then it's going to go up again and up again and up again. And all these little dips are going to be where the ripple is. And this will help smooth it out to stop these things from being visibly flashing at you. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to check this together. You could if you looked around, I'm sure, and get them a bit cheaper. Uh, than one pound eighty one or two US dollars. Mm. But I just did a quick little look. Like I said, I bought these quite a while ago, and I've just been using them. And I was, you know, if, I think I bought like six or eight of them. I'm not not quite sure. But sometimes it is worth just messaging the seller if you've got your eBay account and just say, look, if I buy ten of these, can I have them a bit cheaper? And they might say, yeah, you can for one pound fifty, or you know. What would that be? Ooh, probably one pound sixty in dollars. I don't know what's going on with the British pound. Let me just keep a check. I put these in the right way around because you definitely want to put these in the right way around, otherwise it's not going to work. Now, uh, there are three resistors on this board, and one of them is saying it's one hundred ohms. So the other two are going to be the same. And we're going to look at this one here. We've got a brown black. Black, so let's have a look. Is that brown, black, black? No, I think this is going to be the 100 ohms. I could check it. But if I just look at the other ones, and I'm going to be looking for um, 150, that should be brown and green. We've got four resistors on here. I'm saying that's done it wrong. That should have been 100 R. Uh, let's have a look at this. There we go, 101. So now we know that we've got our 100, we can put that in there. I'm not sure if this is a like a fuse type of resistor or something, uh, but we're just gonna chuck that in. Oh, quick, quick. That's it, get that in. And then we're gonna use, let's just look at these again. Let's just check that these are all the same. So 200. Yeah, they are. So I wonder why the other one's 150 then. I mean, I presume this is supposed to be like a bleed resistor for the capacitor. Um, 
could be completely wrong, of course. And I'd say be very careful, especially if you're going to build one of these and then try testing it with why it is going into, let's say, one of these things. Because it's a um, direct connection to the mains and you really don't want to be doing that. Just checking again. I didn't realise it was going to be that extra. There we go, still 200k. I could just chuck that in. Might look a bit of a mishmash on the back for all the wires, but we can just snip a couple as we're going along soldering, and that'll get some of the excess out of the way. I'll do the two big components last, um, but that's it. That's uh, pretty much put on. I'll get this soldered up, and uh, it'll be good to go with the bigger ones. Right, so let's get. That out of the way. Soldier line in. Shouldn't take long to set up. And here's our little um, circuit. It tells us exactly where to put the LEDs. They've all got to be in series. So you've got a positive and minus, positive and minus, all the way around. I will test these, I'll do it off camera, but just to make sure, I want the warm glow, but I know that um, sometimes you get a mixed bag even though you ask for the warm glow ones, So, but I've got other ones that I can swap them out with just so I can have the, uh, the warm glow, I don't really want too much of the blue light stuff, So, but I'll do a check on those and we'll see what we got there, um, I'm just going to take the face value of the values of these. Right, let's get it soldered up. I'm just gonna put this in this way around so the value of this thing is facing upwards. Makes no difference. And uh, what you wanna do when you put this in is make sure you can turn this over like this. Because this is gonna be facing underneath uh, the circuitry here. You don't want it like this, so this is against here. That's no good, you're gonna want it so if anything, if it touches anything, it's going to be touching the top of this, but it shouldn't, but it's still nice to have that little bit of clearance. Because when you put this in, well, you'll, you'll see when I put it in. Yeah, you want that little bit of clearance. Uh, again, with this, you're going to be doing the same thing, a long lead positive, short lead negative, but you've always got the stripe on there for the negative, so. Put that in. What I really do like about these kits as well is, like I say, they, they hardly use any power. And it's nice to have a night light uh, on. And, you know, I've got one in the hallway there, which was also at my last place. And so that's been running for probably close on two years, uh, all night, every night. You know, with pets, the last thing you want to do is get up in the night and it's pitch black and tread on one of them. Doesn't make out very good, or it could even be worse than that. It could be that uh, they've been sick, or worse, inside where you are, and you're going trading that without anything on your feet. Lovely. <laughs> okay. Now the other thing that we've got to put on now is that we'd have to connect these these wires. For the LEDs, positive to negative, don't get these mixed up because it is, um, you know, polarized. Weirdly enough, on the AC, you actually get two different colors. But, you know, we're not gonna, not gonna argue about that. So let's just pop these in. I don't think it really matters which way the AC goes around. I suppose, um, This might be a bit of a pain if you can't get it to stay still. But we'll see what we can do. Just make sure we get the AC and the AC ones. Oh, wrong way around. AC and the AC ones. Well, can I put that on there and do it? Not really. Maybe I can get it in here. Just get it to stay there. Always with this sort of stuff, it's just a bit of patience, isn't it? Bit of patience, and if you don't mind, I'm just going to bring this light down. Well, 
nice thing about it now with this particular camera I'm using um, it's just an S21 uh, camera it has got this thing actually which is really annoying it uses you know it says it's 30 frames but it's not it's a mixed frame rate so when I go and put it in my editor I've always got to transcode it into something that's a fixed frame rate and I don't know how to change that I suppose I've not really done anything to look it up never used to do it. It never used to be like it, but all of a sudden this thing wants transcoding every time. So I've obviously changed the setting somewhere, I've done something somewhere. I'm going to pop these in just while I'm at it. Doesn't matter which, you know, because they're both black, but it will matter when you're actually connecting it to the, the PCB itself, the, uh, the LED side. Get it in the hole. Oh. Whole wire goes through, so <laughs> that might be a bit challenging. Kill me. Oh, great. Then the wire doesn't go through. Well, I think what I'm going to have to do is just pop it through the hole there and then just bend it over a bit just to stop it from just falling out. Yeah, that should do it. There we go. And if an excess on there can be clipped off the end. Um, where's the other one? Again, I'm going to do the same thing. Just pop it in the hole and bend it over at the top. That's on the same pad anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But I will just be nipping off anything that could possibly penetrate. Uh, you know, do any sort of damage. But that should be facing down. That shouldn't be too much of a problem, actually. Not going to worry about it too much. It's always worth just keeping in mind, look, we don't want that to happen. This hole here is where it's going to go over this part here when we're inside of this and it's going to be a case of just sort of like trying to just jam it down a little bit. But there is enough space to clear anything coming off the bottom of this. Um, of this. So let's get to it and just um, connect this up. You can see actually where the, uh, the positive, which will be this end one on the edge here. It's going to go into the middle here, so it's positive, and then there's the negative. So all these are connected in series. Okay. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna just pause and come back to doing this. That uh, once this is done, we've got this done. So we just got to make sure we get these the right way around now, and. Uh, so that is the negative, that is the positive. I am not going to try and put this through a hole. All I'm going to do is just solder onto that tab. So let's just bring that in. I'm just going to put a little, a little bit of solder on there. Onto that tab. And then just solder this into that. Double checking again that we get it the right way around. not to actually uh, do myself with the solder, the soldering iron. So let's just get that in there. Okay. I don't want it to be touching anything else. I need this down a bit further. Um, looks good. Yeah, that's okay. And then the same for this negative over here. Hello, Felix. Jumped up behind me on the chair. So we've got that on there then. It doesn't matter that's connected to that there because it's all 
part of the same trace anyway. Alright, so there we go. Now, when we put this in then, we're just going to put this over the top of this. So that goes in with that white bit sticking through there. I don't know, I mean, I've tried this so many times, I sort of press it down so it stays in, and that's sort of staying in. If I do that, it's not going to come out. But even if it does once this is on, it doesn't matter. Now this, all you got to do is push it in at the edge and just get it to click into place. Yeah, like I say, some of them are easier than others. Uh, the one I did the other day, oh, it was much easier. There you go, so I've got both ends in, that's in there. But it does make it nice and easy to pop back out again because there's a little bit there, you can just get something in, pop it out. Because if one of these goes, uh, it's not too difficult to get them out, but it's still easier in some respects just to check them before you put them. Really, we got uh, two LEDs and one spare resistor out of our batch. So, moment of truth then, I suppose. Let's. Uh, Let's swap it out on the light there. Let me turn this soldering iron off as well. Just tin the end of the tip to keep it nice. Nice bit of tinny mini. Put that there for the minute. Uh, now the wire on this lamp isn't very long at all, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this up to here. Turn that off first for safety. Untwizzle this one, where's our new one? There's the new one. Untwizzle this and put this in. And uh, flick it on.